Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome around the globe to Congan Water Radio, featuring the Congan Water Health and Information International Call, where we consider, clarify, and often correct the conventional wisdom around Congan Water technology, the different machines, the science behind water types, uses, and benefits, the testing process, the maintenance and cleaning of the machines, and much, much more. We also explore a plethora of other topics as we teach, promote, and discuss the three-pronged approach to health and wellness, hydration, detoxification, and complete macro and micronutrition. I'm family physician, Dr. Lisa Battle Singletary, now retired, now your virtual keto coach. And I will be joined by my co-host and fearless leader, Mr. Terrence Hope, a Magic 6A distributor extraordinaire. And together, we bring you the best of both worlds. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is call number, oh my goodness, I can't even believe it. Call number 402. We're talking about CBD today, and it is June 26th. This year is half spent, half gone. We do have one more call in the first half of 2021, uh, which will be next, uh, no, two more calls. We'll have one Wednesday, we have one more Saturday call uh, in this half of the year, but I just can't uh, believe how quickly this year is going by. So I wanna thank you again for being here. Um, I do want to say for sure next weekend being, uh, so next weekend is the, tw is the 30th, I think. I have to look, but the weekend after that will be in July. And I think it's July the 3rd. Does that make sense? I should look at my calendar. But I just want to assure everybody we will be here for that Saturday. And my topic on, yeah, July 3rd. Okay, so next Wednesday's the 30th. That's the last call of June. July 3rd, the, my topic will be, oh, say, can you see? because we have Independence Day coming up, but also I'm gonna talk about eye health. And this was a request that someone on the call um, made that we can talk about the eye. So uh, we have that to look forward to, but we have something even more juicy and delicious, and wonderful to look forward to right now. And that is we're going to be joined by our co -host, my co-host and fearless leader, Mr. Terrence Hope, the Magic 6A distributor extraordinaire, the vigilant, persistent, consistent health advocate and health influencer to the stars and to the globe. Mr. Hope, are you with us today? Just happen to be around, just happen to be lurking about. Lurking. <laughs> And so, yes, I, I am here on one of my many travels throughout the region and area um, at you another location. Get around. <laughs> What's that? At, you at, at, get around. <laughs> yeah, at another location somewhere in the mountains. So I'm um, glad to be here. Uh, glad to be here with you all. As you can see, I'm look, gazing into something. And maybe later on, I'll show you what I'm gazing at. But it's bright and sunny outside. And it's good to see. Uh, so thank you all for joining us here today on the Congo Water Health and Information Call and taking the time out of your day to spend time with us here in our day uh, where we can talk more about Congo Water, um, its health benefits, what it is um, truly in science, you know, what it's, uh, how to properly use it um, and how to properly, you know, know more um, the proper information about it and how to properly describe it. So we really try to make sure people understand what Congo Water is here. Um, and um, because there has been a lot of information over the years that has been um, uh, just very different um, and uh, clarity needed to be made. So we're glad that all of you have taken an interest in the common water machines 
we're glad that, um, sorry about that. We're glad that um, it has helped many of you. Uh, this past week in conversations, I've been hearing many testimonies um, of people who've had uh, great results in short periods of time. Um, that has been even a surprise to them. You know, um, we can rely on testimonies and we can talk really on a daily basis about the benefits that people receive when they, re when they drink the water. But, you know, we kind of want to have something that's very universal. We want something that will allow everyone to understand what the kind of water machines are and how they work and what they, what they do for your body. Um, and so for that reason, um, we lean on a lot of public information. Um, and uh, today we're going to talk as usual as we do about gone in the water, you know. So I always enjoy going over this again and again. And to some of you, it may be a repeat. But, you know, this information uh, is sometimes, you know, tricky for people to absorb, you know, an understanding of uh, because it's new. Uh, we're talking about a special kind of water. Yeah. Once upon a time, I thought water was water. Now I come to find out that water is not water. That there are all kinds of different types of water. And uh, the kind of water you put in your body uh, will dictate, you know, your body's, uh, you know, physical health and well-being. Um, so what is water? Here's our motto as we go over it at our company, change your water, change your life. This is the motto of the Congo Water Company. Um, what kind of water do we advocate? Our water is called Kangen water, yeah? K-A-N-G-E-N, -E it's a Japanese idiom that refers to a return to origin, as you like to say. Whoops, hold on one second, good. And um, there we go. can I hide this? I can hide my little menu someplace here. Seems to be in my way right, everywhere I turn. But um, change your water, change your life. I'm gonna I'll just switch over to another share mode. Stand one second. And if I can get back to my controls, I'm gonna stop sharing on that one. It seems like my menu bar appears to be in the way of you viewing the entire slide. I'm gonna switch to eeny, meeny, miny, mo. this one. All right, maybe this will be easier to see. Okay, so um, Congan water. What is Congan water? Yeah, uh, Congan water is in science referred to as electrolyzed reduced water, electrolyzed reduced water. Um, this is the water that's produced in a process where electricity comes in contact with water. So you see the phrasing here, electrolyzed reduced water. This is what Congan water is. It's oftentimes been referred to as an alkaline water, but alkaline waters can be made in different forms, uh, in different ways, with different outcomes for different purposes. And not all alkaline waters are health beneficial. Uh, just because a water says that it's alkaline doesn't mean that it has a health benefit. And there's something specific about Congan water, although it's been referred to as alkaline water, is actually defined as electrolyzed reduced water. And this is a specific benefit to that. So electrolyzed reduced water is our term, is produced in a process where electricity comes in direct contact with water. Uh, that process is known as electrolysis, yeah? So here we have electricity, electrolysis, yeah? And um, that produces the kind of water that we use in the kind of water machines. So what's happening here? Electricity is hitting water directly at the water molecule level. And here you have your water molecule, H2O. Electricity hits that, kapow, as I always like to say, and um, causes a restructuring of the water molecule itself. So here's your water molecule, H2O. And when it's hit by electricity, it's divided into two segments. H2O has OH in its, in its uh, title and remaining H in its title. So there's two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom that makes up H2O. When you hit it with water, it divides into two. Um, one of the key elements that are referred to with the Congo water machines is an alkaline molecule known as an hydroxide ion. This molecule happens to have an alkaline pH to it. And we use it as a measuring tool of the overall volume of antioxidant molecules produced in this electrolysis process, yeah? So going backwards, what do we say? We hit water with electricity, yeah? That, recur that, that causes a 
restructuring of the water molecules, which produces hydroxide ions, which are alkaline, and other molecules that are antioxidant. We use this hydroxide ion as a measuring tool so that we know the full volume of the antioxidant impact in the body. The more or greater the number of antioxidant molecules within water, the stronger the antioxidant effect, the stronger the detox effect. So we need to know how strong that antioxidant effect in the water is. This particular molecule gives us a measuring tool. There's a one-to-one -one ratio between this molecule and the other antioxidant molecules within the water produced in electrolysis, the electrical process where water is hit with electricity. So by knowing that, we know what the strength of the antioxidant strength is within the water. And that's important for us to understand so that we make sure we give you a mild detox when we first start in the use of the machines. Uh, let me show you something back here. Going backwards, there we are, whoops. So on the condom water machines, there are several settings. You can see the front face here. Matter of fact, I'm gonna bring something up even more specific. Can I, let, let me, maybe it will, maybe it won't, but I'm gonna try to do that. Um, so there's a um, settings on the machine that allow us to choose different alkaline water levels. Those alkaline water levels and electrolysis produced water indicate the strength of the antioxidant effect. I'm trying to make this not confusing. So watch this, here's our machine, right? You can all see it. Um, and there's a little power button there. And here's our Kangen water settings. Here's the most famous water level of the Kangen water machines worldwide, Kangen water 9.5. And I can push this button and I can get to different levels of the Kangen water machines, antioxidant water. Kangen water 8.5, 9.0, 9.5. These are pH ranges. The higher the pH, the stronger the antioxidant effect in the case of our water machines. So Kangen water 8.5 means you have a mild detox. Kangen water 9.5 means you have a very strong detox. Kangen water 9.0 is mid-range. So you have a milder detox in between. Yeah, so in our water machines, we're looking at the uh, antioxidant effect uh, brought on by the pH level chosen of the level that we're, you know, that we're going to highlight. So um, the uh, stronger the antioxidant effect in our machines, the higher the pH, uh, the milder the antioxidant effect, the um, lower the pH. So 9.5 means we have a strong antioxidant effect. Um, 8.5 is mild, yeah? So just to give you some background on what those pH levels really mean on our water machines and um, why they're referred to, yeah? So um, we go forward. Now we understand that electricity is creating the antioxidant effect inside of our machines and it's giving us the benefit that we're looking for. What's the significance of having an antioxidant water? We're really looking to detox our body, yeah? Um, there is an aspect of our water that gives us um, a cleansing of the cells within our body, yeah? Um, different cells, well, well I'll put it this way. If there's a high toxic load in the body, the body has a problem maintaining proper health. So there are different, let's say, pH ranges in different organs. The stomach tends to be more acidic. The digestive system is either um, acidic or alkaline, depending on the stage of digestion. The lower uh, intestines and, the, uh, and the, uh, the small intestines and the large intestines are both more in the acidic range. The stomach is more in the acidic range. This is the reproductive system for women, more in the acidic range. And then if we look at um, the bloodstream, the, uh, the heart, uh, the lungs, other or organs tend to be more in the alkaline range, yeah? Each organ must maintain pH balance, yeah? So our body is what? It said our bodies are 70% water. Our blood is said to be over 90% water. Um, so the kind of water you have in your body is also gonna dictate the function of the cells. 
our water, Congan water, is a detoxing water. Water is in all the cells throughout the body. The blood requires it at a 9%, 90% level. The uh, other organs and cells in the body are using, utilizing water. There is no level of, uh, in the body where water is not utilized. And it is imperative that uh, you're properly hydrated. And when you're properly hydrated, if you can detox at the same time, you have a win-win situation, yeah? So we have um, a toxic situation that can occur in the body, we must remove that. Here's a little chart showing you the pH levels of different organs in the body. So like I said before, so the small intestines and the large intestines range in the acidic range. We see the brain here on the other side of the chart, ranging in the alkaline range. We see the saliva going from acidic to alkaline, uh, gastric secretions that refers to the stomach that's running in an acid pH range 1.0 to 3.5. Uh, we're looking over here at the bloodstream. We see a 7.4 to 7.45. That's the alkaline range. Yeah. So we're seeing that there are different pH levels, some acidic and some alkaline. Yeah. The body is not entirely alkaline. You and the general public have been generally told that the body is alkaline. Drink alkaline water, eat alkaline foods, and you'll be healthy. From our diagram right here, you're seeing very clearly that your body is not entirely alkaline. What are our common water machines doing? They've been referred to as alkaline water machines. They're not alkaline water machines. They're antioxidant water machines. They're electrolysis water systems produced in a process known as electrolysis, producing a water known as electrolyzed reduced water. What we have here is an antioxidant water that removes toxicity from the cells. And if I can remove toxicity from all the cells throughout the body, I can remove that toxic substance that would otherwise cause the cell to be at an pH a disequilibrium. We can see that cells, if they're very toxic, if there's a lot of inflammation, can lose their pH balance if there's a high toxic load. We can remove that toxic load with an antioxidant water going to all the cells in the body. And thereby you can have the opportunity, opportunity to be much healthier. The cells in the body, the organs in the body must maintain pH equilibrium in order to be healthy. We look to achieve that by drinking an electrolyzed reduced water, what we call Congan water, yeah? So I'll take more questions later on and talk about more things, but I'm gonna pause right there as our illustrious uh, Dr. Lisa Singletary is about to go into uh, a little talk a presentation on a CBD oil as we here on the Condom Water Health and Information Call talk about different types of substances that are beneficial to the health. Um, we look at herbs, we look at uh, nutrients, we look at nutrition, um, making sure that we are thorough. Uh, Condom Water is indeed the best water in the world, but you have to eat too. So we wanna make sure we're thorough and that you know all things about all aspects of things important for your health. So right now, I'll switch the call back over to Dr. Lisa Singletary, MD. And Dr. Singletary, uh, the floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Hope. Thank you for, number one, re continuing to keep that information before us because it is very important and we do learn by repetition. Mm -hmm. So we appreciate you going over that. and. One of the things that struck me today that you said is that when there's a higher level of toxicity in a body, it's difficult for the body, maybe impossible, for it to maintain health. And that's what we wanna do. And so um, that's why the condom water technology is such an important part of um, the three-pronged approach to health and wellness. It's it's not just a slogan that we have, but it's really, um, we've got tools that can make a tremendous difference in people's lives. You know, I actually, I take a lot of notes and I have notebooks, uh, stacks of notebooks of notes that I've taken through the years, but um, particularly in the last uh, few years, and this particular, uh, you know, I have to read them, right? Because I forget what, uh, 
what I've written down. Usually, I, I think my brain considers my pen like a transducer. Like as soon as it's gone through the pen to the paper, I can forget it, right? But um, uh, they, the, I forgot this conversation that I had with an individual. Uh, he um, is a 52 year old male 470 pounds, mm. experiencing water retention, considering bariatric surgery. Uh, he fell, actually um, did a split. So he was, his body was stretched beyond its capacity. So now he's nervous uh, to go out and walk. You know, he's afraid of another fall. So basically he's housebound. He's on the couch 18 hours a day. Wow. He bought a lift chair. He, his legs and his body are swollen. He can't bend over putting on pants. He now has the portable urinal. And this is, all oh, that's bad enough, right? But the sure. thing that broke my heart is he, he confided in me that his wife hates him right now because she's not used to him being helpless. And uh, the, the tragic part about all that is we have something that can help him. We have uh, hydration that can help him, detoxification, nutrition. Mm. He, there is, there's no um, telling I mean, right. what, will happen. I mean, how his life could change if he sure. would just make a few good decisions with his eating and makes a couple of good investments into himself with his wallet and he could turn his life around. Mm -hmm. And there just was not a, you know, he's, he's, uh, I don't know. I don't know. We've, we've had calls, I guess, that address this periodically, but you know, it, it's just that I saw, I, I picked up this notebook today. I was just looking for some empty pages because I'm, I have to buy some more notebooks. My notebooks are filling up and I, I was flipping through and I found that conversation. And actually I'm going to call him today sure, to see sure. if, um, see if his pain is, if he's well, sick and tired well, of being sick and tired. You sure. know? We, we have great information. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you can lead a water. No, you can lead a water. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. And um, people have been inundated with um, what do we call that—the allopathic approach to medicine to health, and you know, to pharmaceutical approaches to medicine. You know, you go to your doctor and you get a pill, and the pill is supposed to handle this, that, and the other. Uh, they tell you there may be some side effects; it may even harm you. Um, but if you take this, you can perhaps get better. Well, that's not really the way health works. Health is a lifestyle. It's what you're eating. It's what you're drinking. It's your activity. So that's your health. That's the real pill you want. So um, if we tell someone that now, after they've been uh, inundated with information from the medical doctor, you know, the, the current industrial medical uh, industry, um, it's very difficult for them to hear. I remember, I think I gave an analogy on one of the calls that when I was a child, I remember walking outside the apartment building we lived in and uh, with my mother and her showing me the fireman that went by, you know, and down the block, there was a doctor's office. Um, there, was, uh, there was a butcher, there was a baker, there was a candlestick maker, you know, there was a barber shop. So you knew everybody by their titles and what they did, right? And you go to these different people for their services. Um, but we didn't know much of what we learned last week about the Flexner report, where the medical industry had the curriculum changed in the medical schools, where, they, they, where the students, medical students no longer learned about nutrition, herbal approaches, and detoxification. And there's an entire encyclopedia, as we've learned, in Europe that was produced uh, you know, I guess about a century ago, which is still very effective on how to use herbal medicine for the benefits of people's health. 
So the medical doctors don't know what they don't know. And they don't know anything about nutrition. Oh yeah. They can't tell you the core of what is your true health, which is your lifestyle. Um, the, the pharmaceuticals cause toxic, toxic buildup. So um, the thing is that because that is our industrial medical industri industrial uh, structure and our medical school structure, and all we know to be what the doctor is supposed to be, it's hard to hear anything else. So when someone who's not wearing the white coat and the stethoscope tells you you need proper nutrition, they can't hear you and they don't know. So, you know, um, I understand why people don't listen. And it certainly takes an extra open mind to consider that there must be a better way than suffering all your life on a medication that ultimately do, you know, does you maybe a great deal of harm um, and does not allow your body to get back to its true nature. Yeah, so uh, even one of the slides that I, I, I forewent today um, talks about the animals in the wild uh, and, their, uh, and their health. And that every one of us knows that if you've seen deer in the wild, squirrels, raccoons, skunks, you know, badgers, possums, uh, uh, lions, tigers, and bears. Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> that none of them have the health problems that the humans do. Yeah, unless you take them as a pet. So there's no diabetes, there's no high blood pressure, there's no kidney failure. There's not one squirrel out there in the wild going to a dialysis center to have their blood, you know, uh, uh, filtered. Why? Because if you're eating the proper nutrition, which is your proper lifestyle, getting the proper hydration, your body's detoxing properly, and not taking on a high toxic load of chemicals from whatever sources, food and junk food and whatever, that your body will be and can be healthy. Yeah. You know? So people don't listen. I understand why. Uh, and um, but there's a growing number of people who do over the past 20, 30 Amen. years. Amen. And um, you know, um, may one day those people influence those who do not understand and, and be a testimony to all that there's a better way for proper health. Amen. So That's today, all I say thank about you, Mr. That. Hope. No? I said, thank you, Mr. Hope. Thank you, Dr. Secretary. So today I'm going to share yet another tool to help people uh, get healthy, which is um, CBD. Ah. And um, we've talked about it. I think uh, I think there was a call about CBD pizza because we were seeing CBD everywhere, CBD and, you know, candies, coffees, toffees, whatever, chewies, gummies, rollets, lotions, et cetera. So um, uh, I'm just, I'm just going to go back to the beginning and uh, share about um, CBD, but let me just say that this is in addition to the three-pronged approach. Get the basics first, the hydration, the detoxification, and the complete macro and micro nutrition. And, and Dr. Singletary, can I raise my hand for a second? Absolutely. Um, I wanted to ask if you wanted to let to do this, I see that someone asked a question early on or wanted to ask a question early on. Um, should we pause for a moment and take that question or? As you wish. Hmm. We'll pause for a moment. So I see someone raised uh, a question. Uh, Raguram Barak, uh, you can unmute yourself. Let's see if I can do that. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm Raghuram Varakala from India, actually. I just have a, some one question. Welcome from, from India. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I, uh, this is the highest pH value is 9.5. Uh, is it okay for health? Because I'm trying to get the literature for this one. But unfortunately, I'm not able to get the literature. So if you don't mind, can you share with me the literature for this one? Because it is well for our Indian business. Yes, yeah, sure. Okay. If you want to share your email... Uh, with me, I'll send the email to you, um, but I'll answer your question as well. And your question was, what is the benefit of 9.5 pH water? And so the Kangen water machines are antioxidant water producing machines. And though our waters are referred to by their alkaline pH, um, the pH per se is not the key point about its health benefit. 
its antioxidant effect in the body is. So when you ask me, what is the benefit of 9.5? I will say that the 9.5 is our strongest detoxing water. It represents the largest volume of antioxidant molecules within the water. Now, there's a 9.0 and there's an 8.5 pH. Recognize this, I'll let you know that the 8.5 is the milder detox, the 9.5 being the highest. Here's our recommendation that comes from the company. We always start someone by drinking the 8.5 pH. What's the difference in these different pH levels? So an 8.5 pH is a smaller volume of antioxidant molecules. Therefore, it's gonna be a milder detox. Sometimes your body is better adjusted by detoxing slower. The 9.5 pH is a larger volume of antioxidant molecules and will detox you at a stronger rate. It'll detox you faster, yeah? Now, it is not necessarily a good thing to detox quickly. It could overwhelm the body if you've never detoxed before. So we always recommend that people always start by drinking the 8.5 pH water first. And we on the Congo Water Health and Information Call recommend as a general rule, people drink the 8.5 level for their first 30 days on the drinking of the water. And then they can go up to the 9.0 and then experiment with 9.5. Why is that? Because if I gave you a 9.5 water and you've never had a detox before and you've never had Congo water before, you might detox too fast. We're talking about releasing toxins from all your fatty cells, all your major organs, all your cellular systems, and delivering that all to the colon at one time. A 9.5 will give an avalanche of toxins to the colon. Your body may not be able to release that much at a time, and it might overwhelm the colon in the process, which we don't want to do. So we'll always say drop start at the 8.5 level. Some persons may be carrying extra weight. Um, if obesity is an issue, then we want to make sure we keep them at the 8.5 level because in a person carrying extra weight, there's a higher toxic load. So even if I get past that first 30 day orientation period where I say drink the 8.5, a person carrying extra weight should continue for the next six months, almost up to a year or until their body weight comes down to more normal levels for their body size, for their, you know, for their height. That's important. So What's the benefit of 9.5? Strong detox after you've gone through an orientation on drinking the 8.5. Always start mild. And even as you go up, consider whether you feel comfortable at the 9.5. It may not be the best for people, even on a long-term basis. Some people get the best results at 8.5. See what level of water adjusts best for your body. 8.5 works best for some. 9.0 works best for some. 9.5 Works, for, works well for others. What level is right for you? Always start at the 8.5 and work your way up. How's that sound so far? Uh, yeah, thank you, very much, thank you very much for the clarification. So this is very uh, important for me, for Indian business actually. And one more thing, I have sent you my mail ID to you personally. Uh, yeah, can you send me the literature also? So I can show you <laughs> to uh, my business. Because basically I'm also working in the former industry only. So it is very helpful for me to uh, to to go to the people very more effectively with this latest also. Very good, very Thank good. I will, I will look for your email. Yeah, and I'm going to actually put my email here in the um, chat box so everyone can have it. So that if you needed to email me, just to make sure I have your email, make sure it's coming to me properly. Uh, this is my e email address: hope at congonwaternation.com. Hope at congonwaternation.com, and uh, I have yours now, Rahu. And I'll make sure I keep that um, going forward. Very glad to help. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. So that, is, you, that, that is only my question. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Did you mean to put that in the public chat? Because I think you might have just responded. Oh, my email address? Yes. Because Okay, I don't see it. Thing. That's why I asked. Oh, you don't see it? No. Oh, let me do it over again so it's public. Put it to everyone, yeah. Thank you very much. I gotta much. keep my eye on you every minute. <laughs> okay, so you just said something else that I am writing down for the 
Terrence Hope Hall of Fame uh, comments, you talked about an avalanche of toxins. <laughs> I love that because that is that is actually um, a very good picture or a very good word picture for what happens in the body uh, when there's an overwhelming amount of not just toxins in the body, but an overwhelming amount of detoxing going on, the toxins being released that were stored in the body for maybe decades. And then, you know, we get Kangen water, ah, and the toxins are coaxed out of the cells and into the bloodstream, and then they have to go somewhere. Mm. And hopefully they'll go out through the kidneys and the liver and all the detoxing mechanisms of the body. Mm. But if they're overwhelmed by this avalanche of toxins, then that is not going to be a good situation because the toxins are still in the body and they're going to land somewhere. Mm. And wherever they land, they could cause problems. We have a friend of the call who um, had, she was on 9.5 water. She and her husband took 9.5 water for like 10 years. Mm. And she got calcium nodules in her breast they just did not I mean she had fatigue she just didn't have the results that we expect to see disclaimer 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 we do not diagnose cure prevent uh ameliorate um right diseases but her she just didn't feel right even though she'd been on 9.5 for years right she got on this call she had an ear to hear and she cut back to 8.5 mm -hmm. her energy went up she felt better her cal her deposits went away mm -hmm. like the 8.5 was healthier for her. now she mm -hmm. has chronic um inflammatory a chronic inflammation, a chronic inflammatory condition. Mm -hmm. So it was all that her body could do to take care of the toxins that mm -hmm. were in her body. And we don't even know. I mean, when we talk to someone about the water, we introduce them to the water. We don't know even going by their body weight. I mean, you know, someone whose body weight is excessive, that they are unhealthy. You know mm -hmm. that because mm -hmm. the weight is a symptom of their being uh, mm -hmm. out of balance, mm -hmm. but someone who's thin and maybe looks athletic or looks, you know, you can't tell. And even though it's more likely that someone with a thinner physique would be able to handle the 9.5, just from the issue of adipose tissue cold being the, the body's storage right. place for stuff they don't know what to do with. Mm -hmm. Stuff the cells don't know what to do. That okay, we'll put it in a in a fat cell and mm -hmm. deal with it later. Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe not. Well, later. well, you know, let me let me hover one more second on this topic because it's a big topic, mm -hmm. and I'm glad that Raghu brought it to the fore with his question because it's an item that people make arrows with again and again. Um, I've seen it all over the world. I've seen it in India. I've seen it in Nigeria, I've seen it throughout the UK, um, where people are drinking 11.5 pH water. Oh. I've even heard of a some sort of protocol mm -hmm. where someone put something together where you use 11.5, deal with very serious health matters. And it's a gigantic mistake because the 11.5 water is not designed for drinking. It's actually a mineralized kangen water that's designed for purification of foods. Uh, emulsification of oils, the breakdown of pesticides on your fruits and vegetables. It's not meant for drinking. It's excessive mineral intake at that point. So where did this come from? The rhetoric that's been used so often that says your body is alkaline, drink alkaline water, eat alkaline foods, and you will be healthy. The rhetoric that says that cancer is born out of, a, out of an acidic environment. Um, it's certainly a pH imbalance environment. Um, and that if you were to give the body alkalinity, 
that cancer cannot exist in the alkaline form. Well, as we noted earlier, the body is not entirely alkaline. There are some organs that are healthy and acidic and must stay acidic in order for you to be healthy. So they, the thought was, well, the person has, they'll say the person has cancer. And the rhetoric was that cancer cannot exist in an alkaline environment. So they look at our machines and say, oh, this is an alkaline water machine. And they see 8.5, 9.0, 9.5. .9 and then they say, oh, but I hear there's an 11.5 there if I push this button. And they say, well, if alkalinity, it makes someone healthy. And if cancer exists in an acidic environment and alkalinity is better for your body, well, let me give them the strongest alkalinity that the machine has, and then they'll really be healthy. Wrong, wrong, wrong. The, the, uh, yeah, various types of chronic illnesses can exist in a pH imbalance environment, certainly coupled with nutrition deficiencies. The idea is to remove toxicity from the body at a rate that the body can handle it, which is why we recommend 8.5, 9.0, or 9.5, depending on whether your body is used to the detoxification process and has been through that process already to some degree, at least 30 days of it, at least. So I'm gonna detox you at a rate that's comfortable for your body to do it. It doesn't matter whether it's 9.5, 9.0, 8.5, .5, whichever one the body can best adjust to. We're detoxing, we're not alkalizing. If I were to in fact alkalize your body, I would in fact throw your pH level too high. I would make the alkaline organs too alkaline. It is not true that the more alkaline your body is, the better. It is not true. It is very specific alkaline pH levels. If I gave you an alkalinity that raised your pH levels inordinately, I would also throw off your acid pH organs, which would make them dysfunctional. So I'd make your acidic organs alkaline. That would make them dysfunctional. You can get very ill. I would make your alkaline organs too alkaline. I've got to detox you. Why? 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 Because your body is self-regulating. It doesn't require what you eat to make you alkaline or acidic. It just cannot be inorganic or toxic. So you can eat alkaline foods, sure. You can eat acidic foods. Your body takes the nutrition and regulates the pH. It does not, it is not shifted by every wind of doctrine. It is not shifted by everything that you eat. Because I ate an orange today does not mean that I become acidic. Otherwise, why would oranges be good for you? Why would grapefruits be good to you for you? Why would lemons be good for you? They're all acidic. Tomatoes are, are, are acidic. Yeah. So the body maintains its own alkalinity at the proper level or acidity in an organ at the proper level because it's self-regulating, it takes care of itself. It is automated to do that. You just have to have nutrition. At the cost of a great deal of energy, it expends energy to maintain the borders of the different water compartments and the pHs of those compartments. So sure. what we do when we um, eat properly- Yep, nutrition. Is we can, decrease the harm that we're doing to the body and we can decrease the energy that the body needs to for it to create its own sure. balance now i do have to i i know there are people that have written articles and books and done uh the the protocols that you mentioned and i do uh have a theory and i can't i'm not doing i'm not going to do the Test necessary, or whatnot, but um, I, I, number one, those protocols do not go on. I'm talking about the 11.5 protocols. Uh, I'm sure they don't go on for a long period of time. You know, when I say long period, weeks and weeks and weeks, and weeks, and weeks or, you know, but I, I haven't read the sure. studies. So okay. But for a short period of time, in a country where the food is primarily non-processed and primarily whole food, um, the body may 
have the ability to handle that level of detoxing for a short period of time. Mm. Uh, I wouldn't try that on uh, in America in a city dweller. Yeah, there's the big however. <laughs> you know, that's bombarded with processed food with sure. EMF radiation, sure. with pollution, yeah. with all of the things that build up toxicity in our bodies with every breath right. that we take. Sure. Uh, but if you're like, maybe in Wenatchee, maybe I could do that in Wenatchee. What do you think, Wendy? <laughs> well, why, well, why would I? <laughs> but the, th the point is, um, you know, there are there are situations under which um, anecdotally there may be benefits from that uh, extreme protocol, but I do not recommend it for mm. multiple, multiple reasons. Right. Hopefully we've been clear. Clear. In the reasons. Right. The body maintains its own pH balance, eat organic, healthy foods, and it will do that. And um, so and then drink the water at the level that your body is comfortable at detoxing at. And I'll just add this last point. I remember when this call first started, it was actually the major subject matter of what pH level people were drinking because it was a huge campaign that said, come alive with 9.5. And everyone was jumping to 9.5 to drink that. And some people like you mentioned, Dr. Singletary, have been drinking 9.5 for many years and not seeing results. Why? They're detoxing at a rate so fast that the body cannot properly detox themselves. And therefore, they cannot achieve a pH equilibrium. Therefore, the body cannot uh, become healthier. So 11.5, no. Uh, 9.5 as a general rule, if your body can handle that, sure. Always start at 8.5 and understand the difference and how to drink the Congo water. It was one of the big key reasons, uh, big key early points brought on by this Congo Con water health information call several years ago. And I remember everyone on the call had been at 9.5 and everyone went to 8.5 and saw better results over the next two week period. Yeah, yeah. Even people who have been on it for a long time, five years, seven years, you know, all of a sudden got better results. So bring it on down, folks. Drink the water level that's best for your body. 8.5 start, 9.0 is mid-range, 9.5 if, if, it's, if it's good for you. Yeah. And get all, get the rest of the program right not it's you gotta eat right you gotta cut the gluten you get i mean let's just start there all right <laughs> because who i talked to someone i think i already shared this on a call right i talked to someone uh who has a dream of showing up a certain way at a major event that's coming up and I mean, this person is very motivated, they think, to um, really show up and, and their body is not cooperating. They are having hospital visits. They're having swelling. They can't, I mean, the joint pain has been prohibitive. They just, and I said, okay, well, let's just start with uh, what'd you have for breakfast this morning? Oh, well, I eat cereal and the, I'm like, just stop there. Okay, let's talk about the sugar and the carbs in your life. And that was like a no-go. It was like, well, you know, you know, <laughs> you can't change overnight. And, oh, you know, you know, I've been eating this way for years and my wife cooks this for me. And I'm like, okay. You choose, right? You choose. You have the power to choose. Do your life. But you're not going to get to walk across that stage the way you want to, making the choices you're making. I'm not sure how mean I was when I said it, but I hope he heard me. But um, I'll have to call him back today, too. So <laughs> but... Um, yeah, so listen, I told you what I'm going to talk about next Saturday, which is, uh, oh, say, can you see? We're going to talk about the eye. But Wednesday, I'm going to talk, this is like part 
two of the kidney. And because um, we talked about the blood vessels going into the kidney, into the glomerulus, those, re those, those vulnerable capillaries in the glomerulus and tracing the blood into the glomerulus, out of the glomerulus and how that is filtered under pressure to start to form urine. Well, part two is called countercurrent multiplication. And I'm gonna go into a little bit of detail and please forgive my geekiness because, but I love this topic. How is it that a person who's dehydrated, uh, their urine gets concentrated as opposed to a person who is very, very well hydrated and their urine is dilute. How does that happen? It happens in the kidney. And it happens in those tubules and the interplay between the tubules and the blood vessels. So um, we're almost at the top of the hour. So I'm not gonna go deep, deep into the CBD. I had a bunch of articles for you, but there's this one article and I'll just show you the others and I'll put them in the show material. So when you go to the replay in Kangen Water Radio uh, in YouTube, go into the, the description box and you'll see the links to all of these articles that um, I pulled forth for the call today. But uh, the one article that I want to really share is from, my fave, healthline.com. And um, it's called The Beginner's Guide to CBD. Now, this article was written last April. Now, Healthline has, and you'll see at the end of this article, which I really like, they put links to other articles that they have done about CBD. But um, I, had a, I have an article Let's see, where is it? This article they wrote in um, 2018, right? Seven benefits of CBD oil. Uh, there was another one, six benefits. This was written last April as well. So there, I, you can just Google things like CBD benefits or CBD in this article maybe, yeah, I love this one, best CBD for older adults. I hate to think about it, but according to the numbers, according to the digits, I'm older. I'm an older adult. So um, I did uh, take a look at this article. This article, The Beginner's Guide to CBD, is what I want to share kind of quickly today. So uh, the safety and long-term health effects of using, oh, that's a, that's a warning about vaping CBD. Now they were, they were really uh, marijuana products that people were vaping that got their, vape, vaping in general is bad, right? For the lungs, um, but that was a little warning there. But here's the overview. By now, You've probably heard someone mention CBD, especially if you live with a chronic condition like pain or anxiety. Why is that? Because allopathic doctors suck at chronic conditions. They don't know what to do. We manage chronic conditions. We manage the symptoms of chronic conditions, but we don't know what to do. And, um, something like pain or anxiety. I mean, it was easy for me working in urgent care, for instance, for someone that came in with an arm that was broken, I could set the arm or with um, a bruise or a cut or, you know, these are things you can see, but um, to deal with the um, chronic symptom, you know, the chronic issues that people had, uh, it was easy for me to say, well, you need to go back to your doctor, your primary care doctor and 
tell them about this prescription, ask them about this prescription or tell them the problems you're having. Like I'm here to take care of your ur urinary tract infection, right? But when I had to be, act as a primary care physician, I was like, these people just kept coming back for the same problems to get the same prescriptions. And I just knew there had to be another way. And I, you know, thankfully over the years, I was able to make some suggestions that actually changed some lives, but it was not, this was before all the bean counters got hold of medical practice. And, you know, now we just, we, we allopathic physicians have to perform and conform to the standard of care and uh, writing someone a Bible verse on a prescription pad does not count as a standard of care, although I found it to be very effective from time to time. So um, yeah, chronic conditions, don't expect the answer from your doctor. As the United States begins to legalize both medical and recreational cannabis, so there's some vocabulary, right, we have to be clear about, the market has enjoyed an influx of readily available CBD. Despite all the publicity though, many people are unsure of what CBD is and how it can help them, and even if it's legal. I'm muting somebody, sorry about that. Okay, so, um, so this article, what, what is CBD? So this is the main, main thing I wanna get across. Just like, now let's, we're, we're shifting topics now. Just like curcumin is one compound that's found in the turmeric root. CBD is one compound that's found in the hemp plant. Another compound that's found in the hemp plant is THC. So what's the difference between, <clears throat> excuse me, CBD or cannabidiol and THC, which is tetrahydrocannabinol. So cannabidiol, CBD, is one of many active compounds found in the cannabis plant. Tetrahydrocannabinol is another active compound. This one is the most well-known because thanks to its psychoactive properties, this is the one that gets you high. So products containing THC, marijuana products, uh, well, this is maybe more effective. Um, actually, the THC is the psychoactive part. The CBD is the healing part. So, um, and it's, it is difficult to get all of the THC out of the CBD but uh, there are companies that go the extra mile to um, purify, quote unquote, the CBD. Uh, can be effective in providing relief from many chronic disorders that we frankly, we meeting physicians, frankly have been stumped by for ever. And it's, they said it, it is in multiple forms. I love the tincture form because when you have a tincture, you can control how many drops you put under your tongue. You can take those drops, you know, take a little bit during the day or more at bedtime. You can, uh, but, and what they don't have up here is coffee. We've got CBD coffee. Um, creams and lotions, capsule. You can put the oil or the tincture into a cream and, you know, boost the, the cream with the CBD. It does come in capsules and pills. Edibles, uh, you hear, hear a lot about CBD gummies. Um, 
so just more and more, um, the commercial market is taking advantage of the fact that um, CBD is becoming uh, distinguished from THC and also becoming more, and the, the, popli the populace is becoming more educated. All right, so those are the times. How much should I take? We talked about this. When do we talk about this? Maybe I talked about it on another call. But um, it depends, right? Because it's a natural compound. And so you don't know really, this is a problem with all, with the entire supplement industry. You, you don't know for sure that what's on the bottle is what's in the bottle. So um, start low because uh, you don't, you, you really don't know what effect it's going to have on your body until you try. Um, but definitely more, you take, you need more for sleep than you do for anxiety, just as a um, general rule of thumb. Uh, so at the end of that article, if you do find it, well, if you click on the link for that article, you'll see some of the other, other articles on Healthline, seven benefits, using it for pain management, benefits and uses, CBD oil for anxiety, CBD oil for rheumatoid arthritis. So there are a lot of um, chronic conditions that respond to CBD. So you will have to give it a try and see how it affects you. Um, I do, I am a cannabinoid entrepreneur. So I do have a trusted source of CBD. And um, if you want to find more about that from me, then contact me, I'll be happy to tell you more. Um, and I see that Juanita's hand is up. So Ms. Juanita, would you like to add something to the call? Yes, good morning, Dr. Lisa. Can you hear me? Barely. Barely. Okay, let me turn off the air conditioner. We're, we're going to be over 100 all week long over here, so I'll get rid of background noise. Is that better? Come closer, come closer. <laughs> yes, but yeah, it was better when you when you moved closer as you were getting up. It was better. Okay. Yeah, keep. Let's hear what you got to say. Okay. Well, good morning. Good morning. Um, this is like Dr. Lisa mentioned. I'm Juanita. I'm here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest, and um, a couple comments first on the water. I've got this chart right here mm -hmm. and I got it when I got my water machine like 12 years ago and it tells me the different varieties of water and how to use them. Mm -hmm. So it clearly says the 11 point, this says, oh, but this is a long time ago, you know, to use it for emulsifying, you could drink small amounts to enhance your digestion. You could soak meat, soak the fruits and veggies, emulsify oils, clean your car, mix with essential oils, soak your clothes, dishwashing. So it's nothing about drinking. So I think everybody should have one of these charts and they'll know how to use the wonderful Kangen water machine. Um, I'm sitting here eating, Dr. Lisa, check this out. These are beautiful, beautiful cherries. Beautiful. They're huge. And they're grown here. I got them at the um, the market. And when we talk about, you know, eating, going gluten-free, um, I've just started that the last couple of months. And it is a challenge. I mean, I've been raised, I said, as long as I can have tortillas, I'll be fine. So we make homemade masa tortillas i don't know how she makes them but they're they're good 
but here in the beautiful Northwest, CBD and THC has been legal for 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. And we, um, I don't know what words you use there, Dr. Lucy, you have a cannabinoid what? I said I'm a cannabinoid entrepreneur. <laughs> wow. I want to know what that means because here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest, we grow lots of marijuana. And I've studied it for several years and people have legalized it here that we could use it for recreational and medicinal purposes. So I have here, and I sent you a picture on your phone. This is called Muscle Melt. It's a blend of both THC and CBD. Um, and it's an infused rub that you put on your owies, right? It's not gonna, it relieves the pain. This here is called Soothe. And this is called Soothing Bath Salts. And it's with eucalyptus and lavender and large portions of CBD as well. You just put it in a bath salt, take a bath. This is called Dragon Ball. Deep I like the name. <laughs> Dragon Ball. And you just rub this on your alley wherever you would like. This other one is called Solus and it's Shea and Argon and a relief. I can't even pronounce some of it. This says 100 milligrams of CBD and one milligram of THC. So we use this stuff, you know, medicinally. I'm not putting this in a pipe and smoking it, although that's legal here as well. And the vape is also legal here as well for several, several, several years. So I just wanted to um, share that little bit. Let me get my notes that I was taking. So in the time that you have used those things, what, can you say how much difference has that made in your life? A lot. Because it comes from the dust of the earth, right? That's where we're originated. So when you use this medicinally, I mean. No, but I'm just saying in your life. In my life. In your life. Yes. And I've used this for probably 20 years in different forms. And legally it's grown here. They've taken out apple trees and cherry trees and made big, um, acres of marijuana. And so I believe because, you know, we are holistic, yeah. um, that this is a great alternative to a shot. I mean, just the name shot, you know, I know people that go get a crotosome, some type of shot to relieve their pain. I'm going like, really? Yeah. And you gotta go back how often to do what? So, you know, just the combination of our food, nutrition, circulation, water, you know, I've got my Avacyn right here beside me for blood. Yeah, when I heard that CBD was in breast milk, I was like, okay, there's got to be something, you know, there's got to be something that it does beneficial in the body. And um, I've been more than pleasantly surprised as I've learned more and more about it. Uh, like I said, to the extent that I uh, sought out um, trusted sources for it. So, um, and yeah, you, I think you said something about the bath salt, the bath bombs. And I mean, it's just the imagination of people coming up with these different products is, is incredible. So, but buyer beware, right? Um, not everything that is on the label is in the jar. So just, uh, but I also love the combinations that they come up with the different essential oils, like you said, lavender or chamomile or St. John's wort or, you know, different combinations that uh, are um, being put together, being made available. So in, in being from the Northwest, I mean, this is a lifestyle and um, I've talked to people from back East and one individual told me um, from the Congan water world that 
marijuana was going to turn me on to heroin or whatever and i was going to become an addict and i'm going like you don't understand it's like moonshine to you guys back there <laughs> not legal you know in many parts of the east and it's just a way of life for us in here in the northwest yeah. So I'm not trying to promote anything. I'm just saying that there's alternatives to, again, I would love to have the discussion on the difference between drugs and medicine because they are not the same. So anyway, I'll give it back to you, Dr. Lisa. Thank you, Anita. And I wonder if Mr. Hope has any final words. Uh, I'm looking in the chat. I don't see any more questions or hands raised. So uh if you want to come back in to take us out, Mr. Hope, I will give a little uh, housekeeping maybe, and or I'll start that. So listen, thank you for joining us today for call number 402 on Tonga Water Radio. Oh my goodness, I just, it blows my mind. And um, thank you for the questions. Uh, we learn from you, you learn from us, you get to turn the call and mold the call with your questions and so uh, and your comments thank you so much so listen you might want to hear this information again you can do so or share it you can do so if you go to youtube and you search for kangen water radio and when you make that search look for the playlist you'll see the individual videos come up but look for the playlist. It's got over 20, 20 videos now. And when you get into that, look for the description box so that you can get all the extra juicy goodness that I put into each and every call replay. Um, just amazing uh, source. It is an amazing source of information, not only for that particular call, but for health in general. So, uh, and when you do go there, please like us, love us, share, subscribe, comment, do all the things because um, we wanna hear from you and that really helps us and encourages us. So thank you again. We'll see you on Wednesday uh, on Dr. Lisa Health on the Dr. Lisa Health Zoom, Wednesday at one o'clock Eastern, and I'll be talking about counter current multiplication. Ah, one of nature's uh, miracles. Like um, it's a, what Mr. Hope was saying, how the body can adapt to different situations. How can the body adapt when you don't have enough water? Or what does it do when you have too much water or um, other things. It's not just water that it takes care of, but I'm excited about that. So we'll see you on Wednesday. Uh, if you hear from me by text and by email, then that means I've got your information. If you don't get emails from me, now I, did I send one today? I think I did. If you don't get emails from me, please, email us and give us your email at Congan Water Radio. You can do that at KW Nation, the number seven at gmail.com. That's KW Nation seven at gmail.com. You can call us at, let's see if I can share this picture. Okay, so Dr. Lisa, Dr. Lisa is not on there. So I'm gonna stop this share, but you can call us at uh, Congan Water Radio, area code, I'm gonna start at 866. Tell me, Mr. Hope. There it is. 866-526-4368. That's US toll free. Area code 866-526-4368.
If you're overseas, you can use our UK line. That's plus four four zero eight double zero zero eight six nine seven nine three. That's country code plus four four zero eight double zero zero eight six nine seven nine three. And there are uh, other ways to to uh, reach us as well. And if you do want more on the nutrition piece, then contact me and, or on specifically CBD, then contact me. Oh, in the um, show resources, there's also a link to a survey you can take to get your health score. And that kind of guides us on how to, um, how to prioritize your nutrition part of the three-pronged approach part of that journey. So we're here for you and we love that you're here and we thank you for joining us and we will see you on Wednesday, same Kangen time, same Kangen station, one o'clock p.m. Eastern time. Thank you so much, everyone. We love you. Mwah. Mwah. <laughs>